Okay, so uh, we are going to switch gears a little bit right now and uh, go to a, a different format for the next half hour. Um, as we were thinking about how to organize this conference, it seemed like being the, the first time that we had kind of a diverse group together looking at different aspects of Hyperloop, it would be very worthwhile to have a bit of a group discussion. And uh, we have asked the president of HARP, Dr. Dane Egley, to lead us in that. Uh, Dane is uh, a friend of mine. Uh, he his well, I, I should let you introduce your background a, a bit, um, and and then go from there. Is that okay? All right. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Um, I did a career in the Coast Guard. I got a bachelor's in civil engineering, a master's in national security, and a PhD in public policy. So you might say I'm a little confused. Or you might say that I'm the president of a, a nonprofit uh, transportation infrastructure uh, 501c3. What I'd like to say, first of all, is thank you for coming. And thank you for the presenters. Uh, we're going to go to the poster session next. Uh, Assistant Secretary uh, Berthy, I don't know if he's still here, but thank you very much for that presentation. Um, IPAM, thank you for co-sponsoring this. And I don't want to pass up a chance to recognize University of Colorado, Colorado Springs, VCU, uh, Virginia Commonwealth University, College of Engineering, UC Santa Barbara, College of Engineering, Texas at Austin, UT, the uh, School of Engineering, and then Kai, Kai University in Japan. So thank you for those sponsorships. And we wouldn't be here today or any of the other previous events we did in Denver, Houston, New York City, Washington, D.C., and now here if it wasn't for the corporate sponsors that stand by us uh, from day one and, and throughout. And that's Hyperloop Transportation Technology, HTT. Shelby, please pass our thanks to your leadership. Uh, you, your, your company is a, a strong, enthusiastic supporter of what we're doing. And then there's a Hypernet Holding Corporation, um, which is basically two of the 10 companies or so. So I would also like to single out a couple people who made this happen and worked tirelessly. About a year ago, two of our senior advisors came to me and said, we have to do this. So, you know, putting together a conference which has a strong theme of rigorous analytics, technology, science, engineering, was missing from our game. And uh, Radu, thank you. And Dario, appreciate that. Steve Cohn from our board. And then our recorder on our video over here, David Pringmill from Vancouver, is a talent that we uh, found this way uh, from, from a gathering or an event. David called me, and what an amazing talent he is. Well uh, spoken, he's written a lot. So if you're out there today, you, you need to join HARP, definitely. We're the only professional association that's doing this worldwide, and it's only going to grow. So please sign up and engage us. Uh, you may be someone who we need as a professor, a researcher, or in some role that will place you at the crossroads of some very interesting situations. You can see by the, the nature of who we get at these events that this is not going away. The train or the pod has left the station, and it's for real. Uh, if you look at the five members of our board on our website, you'll see that you know there are some people on that list, uh, including Steve and others, that are have been wildly successful and, and have a lot of other things to do, but they're choosing to do this because of where it's established and where it's going. Um, so with that, my background is Coast Guard and maritime infrastructure represents the sin qua non of our society. That's because $4.7 trillion is, is supported by the maritime transportation system. Uh, 361 ports, maritime ports, and 23,000 miles of uh, navigable waterways is how we get our commodities into the country. Now then, the transportation system, trucking, aviation, rail, takes it from there. But if we don't get the economic ligaments of our country secure and prepared, resilient, in the maritime arena, uh, then the country comes to do a screeching halt from a supply chain perspective. That's my background. That's how I 
kind of clicked for me when, when this capability was presented. So I have a strong maritime piece, but it links to all other pieces. HARP, Hyperloop Advanced Research Partnership. What is Hyperloop? Uh, I think uh, Secretary Berthy uh, defined it pretty well. It's a continuum of capabilities. It could be right now a, a uh, carriage, a pod, or a, um, some device that moves fast. It may, it may not be you know, going immediately to a Hyperloop pod. So I think it's important to recognize that it's the entire continuum of capabilities. Um, advanced, we're going to be pushing the system. Uh, what I appreciate about the, the younger generation as well as our presenters and those of you that are here from every perspective is the courage you have. You say, courage? Well, if, if the presentation from um, our Japanese university, if I heard it correctly, it's, it's the human leadership and element, that element he had on his last bullet. And so uh, overcoming the fear of a new technology, a new capability, uh, is, is what I see. One other comment I'd like to make before I open it up to uh, input. When I first started this, uh, about two years ago, we, we formed our team. A lot of the people that were involved in this already in the public, private, academic sector said, well, we've got 10% is the science, engineering, and technology. We've got that. Did you hear that? We've got it. it. I mean, it's there. It's been invented. We can do this. Science, engineering, technology, what we're talking about today, it's there. The hard part's going to be the remaining 90%. Policy, politics, regulation, standardization, right of ways, easements, economics. Okay, but it's important that we recognize when we talk to those who have to actually put steel on target, actually have to put the uh, capability in the system, present it to an assistant secretary at DOT, that you have to have that science, engineering, technology, not just at a technology readiness level down here somewhere. It's got to be more than a proof of concept, more than a prototype. And as much as I like what I hear from Virgin Hyperloop One and HTT and these other companies, Transpot, Arrivo, the people that do that 90% do not see the 10% yet. So the bad news is um, a lot of people can talk. We've got a lot of talkers, a lot of, a lot of researchers, and a lot of papers being written, a lot of engineers that are proud of what they've done. That's great. The good news is you're it. You've got you've to do that. We've got to bring that together and actually demonstrate the utility of the capability. It's got to be affordable, reliable. I didn't, I didn't, there were some words on that list of uh, traits that, that got to be there. So what I'd say to you today is thank you for your courage to put your careers out there. Thank you for your investment in time and effort, volunteering, and the, the technical intellectual rigor that I see in your presentations that we, we needed. This, this, this was the first time. Radu, Dario, Steve, this is the first time that we brought together a group that is an exemplar of where we need to go internationally. This, this conference, we were invited, encouraged to go to UAE, Abu Dhabi. We were invited to go to maybe London, maybe Toronto. No, we wanted to come to UCLA because our senior advisors said, no, we need to come here and have this group. So with that, I would say 10%. Yeah, it's 10%, but it's zero if we don't show the science, engineering, and technology that comes together. HARP represents a bridge for you. So your great work, your great paper, your great research, your great engineering will go maybe to a journal, maybe it'll go, but if it's going to translate into a career for you, a job for you, HARP is going to need to be a bridge. Hyperloop Advanced Research Partnership. We are going to have to demonstrate that we can bring together the people that make decisions and have the finances to you, the researcher, engineer, and technology people. To bridge that, that's what HARP's going to do. So when we call Pete Ron at, your, at Maryland, we call the Deputy Assistant Secretary at DOT, we find a very receptive 
very attentive leader in the public sector because there's there's no place where they can put their eyes on target and see where is this being brought together. And I think if you were here for Pete Ron's presentation, you can get a sense of the excitement that some of our senior leaders have. That on their watch, this isn't going to just fade away. And I think the presentation we just had is an example of that. So with that, I used up uh, 15, 14, 15 minutes. I'd like to ask uh, if we have the microphone. So the floor is open. We're attentive as HARP to what you think we should do. We've done Denver, small, looking inward. We did Houston, University of Houston. We had students, professors, the local maritime ports, uh, the refineries on the Houston Ship Channel, third largest city in the country, not an insignificant gathering. Then we went to New York City. We had investors. We had researchers and academics. And then we went to Washington, D.C. at the American Enterprise Institute, had a phenomenal gathering of, of Capitol Hill staffers, maybe some public policy people, and Pete Ron kind of set the tone there. And now we're here with you, really focused on an academic, scientific, technology focus. So we need your help. And you don't need to do it now, necessarily. You can come see any one of us after poster session tomorrow morning. But I got my uh, notes going, and Radu has his sheets going. Steve, we'd like to listen to you right now. Any suggestions, ideas, where HARP in these historic and consequential times can help you get to where you need to go, how we can put this industry uh, not as theoretical, but something that the assistant secretary contends with when he looks at his He's only used five out of the $35 million. What is that billion? Okay, let's go B. Okay, when he looks at that, that he calls us up and says, hey, Harp, who should we interview? Who could come in and talk to us? Transportation Research Board, how are you going to integrate this with the terminals? How are you going to interface with existing transportation systems? That's problematic. That is, a, that's a, bridge too far. We can't see how you're going to do that. Who are they going to call? They're going to call HARP and say, you know, we'd like to talk to companies. That's good. But they all have a, a, a profit margin and a, and a sale to, to make. We'd like a nonprofit to come in. So we're going to get access to some of those venues on your behalf, especially if you're a member of HARP and you talk to us. So any, any, any suggestions or input would be appreciated. Yes, sir. So, so let's start with a microphone and then t say your name and where you're Hi. from. Hi, my name is Ilan Benyakov. I'm faculty at UC Santa Barbara in the electrical engineering department. And uh, I'm not even sure if this mic's doing anything, but it looks good. So. Yeah, you do, you do look good. <laughs> but um, so as a kind of a technologist, I think, you know, one thing that, and especially at the, at the research level, a lot of us come up with great ideas to pursue. And I think one thing that probably maybe isn't necessarily done well at the early stage of research that could be done better is to put a bit of thought into kind of the scaling and the economics um, before actually launching into the research. And I think one thing that could potentially be useful to technologists is some, you know, some mechanism to interface with people who could help them sort through these before they really dive into the research. And I think maybe that's something that, that HARP could help out with. Okay, thank you. That's, um... Absolutely. That, that's the kind of thing we want to take. We're, we're having a board meeting tomorrow. We're going to shape our, our future, our vision, where we're going with our strategic business plan. That's going to be right there. We need help. We think we're pretty good, but we're not as good as we could be if we have your input. Yes, sir. Can, can we get the, hopefully the mic's working. Name and where you're from? Franklin Boss from Virginia Commonwealth University. Thanks for, thanks for being a sponsor. Yeah, you're welcome. We're glad to be here. We're going to join HARP, too, as part of this. But I'm here with our team who competed in the uh, SpaceX competition. We've got some other teams here presenting. What about establishing a student organization 
under HARP, so you have student-affiliated organizations. Because I know the teams were communicating with each other, or between each other, and sharing information, so that could be a forum for them. In your meetings, you could actually have student chapters meeting as part of the part of the, part of the program. It's a great and idea. And also, these are the future. Exactly. Or I'll pass it to Arthur Chadwick, who's president of our student organization. Hi. Yeah. If uh, if we could be able, or if y'all could be able to provide a platform for communication between SpaceX University teams and other other you know interested groups of people that want to help you know decide on what is the the general idea of the hyperloop because all these teams are going around doing different ways about making right. their hyperloop pods. But if not one you know, like main design is established, then there won't be this consistency between borders uh, inter in the U.S. or internationally. So. That's a great idea. What was your name again? Uh, my name is Arthur Chadwick. Arthur, thanks for that input. And let's talk a little bit more with our team uh, because we have two uh, professors that coordinated this. I think we, we could do a lot to help that. Thank you. Thanks, Arthur. You're Yes. Hello, uh, Jesse Powell. Um, thank you. And uh, where are you from, Jesse? I'm from New York. Um, and I guess uh, one of the things that I've found frustrating, uh, one, putting together information for this talk, but uh, in general, finding out more about um, uh, Hyperloop is that it's very opaque, the field. I mean, Hyperloop 1 doesn't really dis divulge much. and Right, and HTT doesn't divulge much, but what would be useful to uh, Hyperloop professionals and interested people and the public at large would be a kind of a uh, public clearinghouse of the standard uh, of technology, um, whether you're talking about induction motors or linear synchronous motors, those types of things, and showing, kind of giving an overview of what is possible and where the state of the technology is at, as far as we know. Kind of a snapshot of where the industry is. Yeah, so Rick, Rick Eddy is uh, Cornell University and a co-founder and board member of HARP. And I had this idea from uh, chatting with Barry right there, who graduated from Louisiana in uh, Lafayette, right, in civil engineering. And so, you know, one of the, I just want the reaction to this, and maybe Franklin's comment uh, spurred, you know, my thoughts is that I wonder if HARP could perform this function of a clearinghouse for students who are interested in entering this industry from various sectors. It could be MBA people, it could be engineering people from different backgrounds, but I think we have to, you know, it's a pretty specialized area, right, of infrastructure. Uh, I was so impressed with the teams that we met yesterday at the SpaceX event, you know, but Elon Musk can't hire everybody. <laughs> and so I think, I wonder if we could serve, you know, have a site that would have a list of students who contact us voluntarily, obviously, uh, with their, their uh, link to their CV, a short bio, and a photo, so that the industry can see what students out there in the engineering world, or other worlds, even law perhaps, want to get involved in the Hyperloop. And then, you know, on the, on the uh, demand side of that job market, the companies could contact HARP to say, we have these positions available. That was just kind of, kind of a market clearinghouse for the, for the human capital in the, in the Hyperloop. Now, that's consistent with what Franklin said, but just an idea of might want to chew on, Dane. I kind of like a hypernet headhunter that's a professor at Cornell. <laughs> Ian, up here. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You're next, Ian. Uh, I'm Mustafa Mubasha. I work for Stoughton Tomasetti. I'm based in uh, New York. So with all the amount of energy and effort that everyone is putting into Hyperloop, I have a suggestion. Uh, would it be useful to have a sort of a workshop event that uh, compiles people from industry, regulators, uh, financial institutions, engineers, researchers, and the aim of that workshop is to have some sort of a set of recommendations or what are the uh, most pressing topics that we need to work on as a Hyperloop community? <clears throat> Which issues do we need to address right now at this moment from a regulatory point of view, from a financial point of view, from an engineering point of view? Uh, because uh, when you look at the spectrum of the effort that's being taken voluntarily, but by many people, there's a lot of effort, like so much effort in certain directions, 
and some other directions are completely um, yeah. um, not addressed, let me put it that way, not, not, really, um, uh, not really present in, right. in, in the discussion. Whereas these topics can be very important, especially right. from a regulatory and financial point. So what was your first name again? Mustafa. Mustafa. So, so one thing I need to let you know is that early on we saw that, that need to package up some of these key topics. So if you look at our website, we have about eight councils that we're in the process of building where we would dive into those safety, security, standardization, industry engagement, engineering, economics. So all those topics you listed, um, we have a place where we can gather, a convening, and we're going to work on that. So it, it dovetails nicely with what your suggestion is. But look at the councils on the website, and after you join HARP and make a generous donation, we'll look at how we can get your thoughts integrated right in there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mustafa. Ian. Um, Ian, Ian certain, certain technical books. One of my concerns about Hyperloop, which I've been looking at for about three, four years, is the almost total focus on passenger traffic. Yet the money lies in freight. Right? In particular, 53 foot high cube containers. And if we're to attract the interest of industry, the CXXs, the Norfolk Southerns, and the government, I think we have to demonstrate we can make money. And the only way of doing that is through freight. Which means, of course, that many of these designs are much too small. The, these containers are not very flexible, so the bends will have to be very wide. This is not a trivial comment, but I think it's now is the time to be looking at it. Design for freight, and the, we'll do the passengers sometime later. Thank you. Thanks, Ian. From Ash, Ashland, Virginia. Hello, Brad Schwartzwelter. I work for Amtrak. Um, I don't really have technology to offer, but uh, one of the things that's been absolutely paramount in Amtrak's history since 1970 is that we have a National Association of Railroad Passengers, train fans. And the political power that they have had has brought us enough money to be able to maintain an extremely average rail system over uh, decades. And uh, uh, I wouldn't call uh, for the creation of a Hyperloop fan base that would be politically active as a part of, uh, as, as HARP itself, but perhaps as a subset where everybody who doesn't have uh, advanced degrees and the ability to do beautiful things like the modeling that we've seen or, or, or levitate a great big pod off, off a piece of metal, uh, but are still excited about it, have a place where they can go and then also make themselves heard in the uh, halls of government around the world so that the technology gets advanced and that drives the money to you guys. You're kind of defining HARP. Well, I was, a, I was of the impression that, that HARP was the people yeah. that were in that, in that yeah. area. Drawing others. Mm -hmm. No, it's good. We need that to expand the aperture. Anything else? Yes, sir. I'm Al Florence from Denver, Colorado. Um, I've worked in aerospace corporations and wound up at a think tank in Washington, D.C. before I retired. And I was thinking, perhaps, if this makes sense or not, I know at my think tank, at Bida Corporation in D.C., we would bring in speakers in industry and technology to present to us and to learn from them what's going on in industry and in technology. And I was wondering if it makes sense to do that with hyper, with, uh, with, with these folks. Yeah, subject matter experts yes. from around the world to come, come visit us. Well, present at these, Pre these present at, 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 at these organizations, think tanks, whatever. Well, we have a world-renowned scientist in yourself here today, so we're doing pretty well. Okay. I'm Tom Heaton. I'm from Caltech, and um, one of the things that I'm kind of wondering about is how uh, this is going to scale up to replace. Uh, it's supposed to be the future, right? I mean. And it should replace, for instance, the existing Shinkansen system, which is an incredible people mover 
that the entire country of Japan just completely relies on. It's just not at all obvious to me from all the presentations I've seen how this kind of hyperloop system will ever move that number of people every day. Uh, I think somebody really needs to work on that problem. Did, did you hear that in the back? Some of the smart millennials, engineers? How, how are we going to scale this up to transport that volume of people? Well, New York City, move. they would tell you they're, they're moving millions every day in and out. Okay, what I'd like to do with the remaining uh, couple minutes is our next conference. Um, we're looking at a couple different locations, a couple different themes. Any, any uh, parting thoughts on what our next conference should be? Yes, sir. Yeah, Toronto or other areas. Why? Not just within the U.S., but in other countries that are why very did you interested. Why did you pick Mexico City and Toronto? Uh, they they said uh, Toronto. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I'm from Mexico, and we have a project that is yeah. kind of on the area. Well, you know, that's great. Um, Transpod is based in Tor Toronto. Uh, we've had, got a good relationship with them. And Mexico City, it's a matter of crossing the border, north and south. Canada and Mexico are definitely going to play. So we need your help. You know, join HARP, come, come on board our team. And, you know, inside those councils, we're going to need your help to shape that. Any other, other ideas on our next, our next uh, specific conference? Okay. So keep in mind there's, there's institutions out there right now that are looking for you to come there and study and research. Uh, make sure you meet Brian Donahue, one of our new senior advisors from Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Lab on the East Coast. Uh, we've got a strong uh, front range Colorado representation, but LA's you know, center of gravity for a lot of this. So um, we're going to keep working on it. We need your help. Thank you for your input. And you know, uh, my last comment, uh, Jorge, thank you for being on the team that made this happen. All yours, Steve. All yours. Thank you, Dan. Cool. It, Dane is, is someone that it, it's hard to put on the spot and make him feel out of place, and I'm not even trying. That was great. Thank you for leading that for us. Uh,